1.2, day two, measuring of segments and angles. Today we're going to be focusing on angles, angle measurements um, with degrees, naming angles, uh, adding angles up to get bigger angles. So let's start with naming angles. ABC is a 38 degree angle. That means that you can mark the angle as 38 degrees. The name for a 38 degree angle would be acute. Well, what does that mean? Acute angle is greater than zero, but less than 90 degrees. So it's somewhere between zero and 90 degrees, meaning an acute. I remember that because it's small, meaning cute. QRY is 157 degrees. So if that's 157 degrees, that would be referred to as an obtuse angle. An obtuse angle is between 90 and 180 degrees. Can't be 90, can't be 180, but it's somewhere between there. Obtuse meaning large. NBZ is 180 degrees. If an angle is 180 degrees, that is a straight angle. And that would have to equal exactly 180. And a 90 degree angle, which is designated by a right angle in the corner, that means it is right and it has to equal exactly 90 degrees. Example one here shows that we have big angle ABD, and that's what we're trying to find. We have angle one, which is also named as ABC, angle two, which is also named as CBD, and angle three, which is ABD. So we want to find angle three basically because it's ABD. Well, angle one is 88 degrees. Angle two is 34 degrees. Well, angle ABC is both of those two together. So you can take the 88, add the 34, and find that the angle ABD is going to equal 122 degrees. Now, for example, two, we're going to use the same picture. So angle one is 9x plus 7. Angle two is the 4x plus 2. And angle three, which is the whole thing, that is 10x plus 30. Well, what can we do? Thinking of that same idea as before, we can take angle 1, add it to angle 2, and set it equal to angle 3. So we can do 9x plus 7 plus 4x plus 2, set that equal to 10x plus 30. Our goal is to solve for x, so we get 13x plus 9 is equal to 10x plus 30. Solve for x. x is equal to 21. x ends up equaling 7. Our goal is to find the measure of angle 2. Well, measure of angle 2 matches up to 4x plus 2. Plug it in. 4 times 7 plus 2 gives me 30 degrees. Example 3 uses the same picture. This time they're giving you in an expression and you have to figure, write it out using the numbers. Angle 1 is 4 times the measure of angle 2. Angle ABD is 105. Find the measure of angle 1. Well, 1 is 4 times the measure of angle 2. So the smaller angle is obviously angle 2. So that's what we will call X. That means measure of angle 1 is 4 times that, so that means that would be 4x. Well, angle ABD, all of it together, is equal to 105. So we can take 4x, add x, set it equal to 105. 5x equals 105. Solve for x. x ends up equaling 21. And now we can get the measure of angle 1 because the measure of angle 1 is equal to 4x. So 4 times 21 gives me an answer of 84, and I'm done. Example 4, let's mark your picture. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. That means that this angle and this angle are the same. I will mark them with a loop with a, a tick mark. Angle 1 is x plus 25. 
Well, that means angle 4 is also x plus 25 because they're the same. But angle 4 also is 40. Measure of angle 3 is 2x plus 30. Our goal is to find the measure of angle 3 and then the measure of angle 2, which is right next to it. Well, what do we know? We know since 1 and 4 are the same, we can take 4 is x plus 25, but it's also equal to 40, so we can solve for x saying x plus 25 is equal to 40. Solve by subtracting the 25 over, and x equals 15. We want the measure of angle 3. Well, the measure of angle 3 is 2x plus 30. Well, that's 2 times 15 plus 30. That's 30 plus 30, which equals 60. Looking at our picture, the measure of angle 2 and 3 make a straight line. Well, we discussed straight lines equal 180 degrees. So if the measure of angle 3 is 60, the measure of angle 2 has to equal 180 minus 60. So that's 120, and we're done. Example 5 is similar to what we did the first day. The perimeter of the triangle is 36. Each side is marked. So what you can do, the perimeter is all sides added together. Add them up and set it equal to 36. Simplify. Well, we got 3x plus x minus x, so we're back to 3x. You have 17 plus 15 plus 10, giving a total of 42. Set that equal to 36. Subtract the 42 over. 3x is equal to negative 6, so x equals negative 2. All right, now we can find each missing side. If I plug in negative 2 here, it's going to be click, click, so this side is 12. I put in negative 2 here, this side is 13, and I put in negative 2 here. And this side ends up being 11. So we got 11, 12, 13. And we will soon learn that that would be a scalene triangle because all sides are different. We're going to finish up the lesson by solving systems. The easiest way to solve a system is by linear combination. All right? That means you need to have variables cancel each other out. Well, the easiest one here would be the y. So how do 1y and 6y become opposites of each other? That's if I multiply the top one by negative 6, the y's would eliminate each other. Well, doing that, I get negative 18x minus 6y equals positive 6. Each number has to be multiplied by that. Negative 6, otherwise, you will not balance the equation. All right, it's like a big addition equation. Subtract these two, you get negative 14x is equal to 28. Divide by negative 14. x ends up equaling negative 2. How do I get y? I plug it back in. You can plug it back into any of these four equations. Well, I'm going to plug it back into this one right here. I can say 3 times negative 2 plus y equals negative 1. That's negative 6 plus y equals negative 1. Add 6 over y equals 5, so negative 2, 5 is the answer to this system. In example 7, we need to get it so that they are balanced on each side. You want the x and the y's on the same side to do linear combination. So in the top one, we're going to subtract the 2y over. In the bottom one, we're going to add the 4y over. So the top equation becomes negative 2x plus 3y equals negative 5. The bottom one is 5x plus 4y, because we're going to move over the other side, equals 24. Now let's see which one we want to eliminate. Let's eliminate the x's because one's positive, one's negative. So the top one will multiply by 5, bottom one by 2. That gives me 
negative 10x plus 15y equals negative 25. Bottom becomes 10x plus 8y equaling 48. Make addition, so the x's cancel out. You get 23y is equal to 23. Well, dividing by 23, y equals 1. Great. Now we need x. Well, I could plug it back into either one of these or even this over here. So I'm going to plug it back into this top one. So I get 3 times 1 is equal to 2x minus 5. So that's 3 equals 2x minus 5. Add 5 over. 8 is equal to 2x. x equals 4. And the point I was looking for was 4, comma, 1. Last example. We need to get rid of the denominator. Well, to have a common denominator here, we'll multiply this by 15. To eliminate the denominator here, we'll multiply this by 2. So if I do that, I do 15 times 2, which is 30, divided by 3. So that's 10a. 15 times 1 is 15, divided by 5. So that's 3m equals 15. Bottom one, 2 times 1 is 2, divided by 2 is just a. 2 times 3 is 6. And the negative 42 times 2 gives me the negative 84. Well, what do we want to eliminate? Let's multiply the top one by negative 2, which will eliminate the m. So I get negative 20a minus 6m equals negative 30. Bottom stays as a plus 6m equals negative 84. Big addition. M's cancel out. So we get negative 19a is equal to negative 114. Divide by negative 19. a ends up equaling 6. Now I wouldn't plug it back into one of these two. These look a lot easier. So I'm going to plug it back into this guy right here. And I'm going to say 6 plus 6m is equal to negative 84 minus the 6 over. 6m is equal to negative 90 divided by 6. m equals negative 15. So in alphabetical order, 6 comma negative 15 is my answer. And we're done solving systems. And that is your day 2 for 1.2, the measurement of segments and angles.